everybody and I welcome you again in my channel I Dr. Tutsi. This is the third presentation of a topic cornea as a refractive medium. Let me just briefly remind me what we had in the first part and in the second part. First part was about the cornea as itself, the general information about histology, some corneal parameters as optic and refractive parameters, then a little bit about aberration and biomechanics. The second part was about the examinations. We just started to talk about corneal examinations, which are keratometry, topography, tomography, and now we're going to continue with examinations in the, our third part. Let me just remind you that this topic is in general is a compact information about the cornea as a refractive medium, which means that what kind of information we have to pay attention on when we consider cornea for any of refractive surgeries. So let's get started. We begin with elevation corneal topography. So there are, as we already discussed, there are every method has advantages and some limitations. The main advantage of this uh, examination that it uh, defines the corneal abnormalities, location and extension. It's very easy to guide with this examination a LASIK surgery. It provides with aspherity measurements and elevation map also can calculate the refractive map. So the limitation is that this method actually doesn't provide a real-time measurements. It um, doesn't give such an accurate pachymetry measurements pre- and post-operatively uh, because the ultrasound method uh, of uh, measurement corneal thickness is more precise for nowadays and still it is. And the posterior measurement is not um, accurate anymore as it was considered, considered previously. But what we have to know about did this uh, examination that there are main parameters which are RIO index and tonable index. So about RIO index, the normal measurements of this index is that uh, first of all it's an index from the posterior elevation map and it shouldn't be more than 40 microns. So when it's less than 40 microns it's considered normal. For another tonable index we can say that this is a from anterior elevation map and it, the normal range are within 20 microns. And just in general clinically what it's good to know as we can see for example in this slide the central part of an image includes only three colors. So when it's just three colors or two colors, or uh, it, it means that the cornea is normal. So this is like a first image estimation, first image estimation, yeah. And uh, additionally, elevation corneal map uh, topography, I'm sorry, includes 24 additional parameters, but all those parameters are not clinically estimated. Uh, that's why we don't use it uh, in a practice and they're not proved. Uh, also, what we have to know, for example, in this slide, uh, I showed you that elevation corneal topography, it gives the information by slit transversal scanning and slit rotative scanning. Basically, all this information is about best fit sphere, which is very important for the uh, indications or contraindications uh, for the future refractive surgery. Uh, I mean corneal refractive surgery, of course. Yeah, and let's talk about corneal aberrometry. So as we talked already in the first part of this presentation, uh, as we talked already about the aberrations, so basically aberrometry measures uh, aberrations. So corneal aberrometry uh, using a wavefront sensor, which allows us to analyze aberrations in the wavefront of light passing through the optical system. Here in the slide, uh, it shows us how to analyze the wavefront. A barometry uh, is used to determine wavefront errors of light passing through the eye, and these errors are described by Zernike polynomials. So there are orders of aberrations from low to higher. The low uh, order aberrations begin from zero 
I wrote from one, but it's all good, okay? From, zone, from zero to the infinity. But clinically, we only talk about the uh, four order aberrations because more than this, clinically is not uh, describable, let's say like that, and it's not useful for the clinician. So here in the slide, for example, we can see the uh, the aberrations from zero to the second orders, and this describes the sphalar cylindrical uh, defocus. The third order describes coma, tilt, and trefoil, and the fourth order describes uh, spherical aberration, which affects visual quality. Uh, in this slide, for example, uh, this uh, you will have a question like what is that is it also a zernike so no we have to distinguish and to know that wavefront deformation is presented by zernike polynomials but the analysis is actually performed by using fourier decomposition so this is how we estimate the aberration by this image then so the main parameters of aberrometry, what we have to pay attention on is Zernike polynomials, root mean square, the point spring faction and modulation transfer faction. This is what we have to remember because all these parameters we're going to discuss in our future presentation when we will be discussing uh, aberrations more detailed. Next examination is optical coherence tomography. Optical to coherence tomography provides the information about the cross-sectional image of the cornea. As we can see in this slide, this is a normal picture over this is a picture of a normal cornea. So what are advantages and limitations? First of all, uh, this method allows us to zoom into the uh, zoom in on the cornea and it provides an accurate pachymetry map and the limitations it cannot uh, pass through the pigmented iris uh, I don't really uh, think that we need uh, to know that much uh, what happens after the pigmented iris for the LASIK refractive surgery but yeah this is one of those limitations which this examination is not providing us and next, so cases when we need OCT for cornea is uh, to monitor the shape of the cornea uh, and the health after corneal refractive surgery. So by this method, we can estimate the wound healing. Uh, we can estimate the situation of the graft after keratoplasty surgery, for example. And then we can estimate corneal incisions and uh, just see the situation of the cornea in the patient who is using contact lenses. And here uh, in this slide uh, and the future slides, I'm just, I'm just gonna give you a few samples, um, uh, cases of the patients. For example, in this slide, the top image is the patient uh, one week after LASIK surgery. So I will just tell you, maybe it's not really visible, but I think you can see the line in the cornea. So this is a line of the flap. And the de depth of this flap is 109, 115 microns. Below, we can see the image of the same cornea, but two weeks after LASIK surgery. So what we have to pay attention on, there is a gap filled with epithelium, which is uh, vis visualized between the temporal edge of the flap and the stromal bed edge. So the width of the gap uh, was measured with computer and caliper and it's uh, 364 microns. So with this method, the advantage of this method that we can clearly see this and uh, check it in the future, like controlling this condition. Yes, and the next image, next case, for example, is a patient after a photorefractive keratotomy enhancement. Uh, and after the surgery, this patient has visual acuity 2050. And of course, is not really happy because additionally, this patient has haze and the quality of vision is not really uh, good. And so, but OCT examination showed us that the central corneal thickness was 344 microns 
and while the depth of the opacity was determined to be 127 microns. So as we can already estimate, there is not enough um, stromal bed thickness for a phototherapeutic keratectomy to remove the haze. That's why what we have to do in this case, uh, for this patient was prescribed corticosteroids treatment and after six months, the visual acuity was improved to 2020. So this is just uh, another sample of OCT image. And as you can see, it's really nice to control the healing process and to see a condition of the cornea after mm, refractive uh, surgery or any other surgeries which uh, include the, co the cornea. Next, and this is a pachymetry map which I told you. Uh, this is just a sample of an image and in this slide, for example, you can see um, the parameters and the points which give us the information when we have to worry uh, about the parameters and about the thickness and when we have to pay attention on, on all these measurements and consider any abnormalities on the surface of the cornea. For example, there is basically is everything about thickness. So when the difference between minimum and medium corneal thickness is less than minus 33 uh, three microns, when the difference between inferior and superior part of the cornea is less than minus 31 microns, when the difference between inferior temporal and superior nasal less than minus 48 microns, when the thinnest corneal thickness is less than 492 microns and when the thinnest region of the cornea is outside of the central two millimeters area. So I think this slide is very good to remember or just, I don't know, to print it or hang it somewhere. Um, so it will be very helpful to analyze and to pay attention on all these parameters when you have a patient uh, when you suspect about any keratoconus conditions. So com combination of these measurements with the parameters of other examinations, I think it's going to be a very good tool for a right diagnosis. That's basically it about cornea as a refractive medium. Uh, I think it was um, helpful and useful information for you. Uh, as I told already, this is a compact information of everything we have to pay attention on when we consider cornea for uh, refractive surgery. Thank you for your attention. Uh, hope to see you again on my next videos. I will keep you updated. Have a good day. Bye.